Hello, welcome along. I'm Tip Squirrel from tipsquirrel.com. In this video, I'm looking at Photoshop actions and how we can learn from them. Okay, let's take a look at the actions palette. If you can't see it, then go up to the window menu and choose actions or press F9. Let's take a look at how actions work. Whenever I see a triangle like this, I know that I can see more information. It looks like the triangle rotates, so this is referred to as twirling open. So here I'm going to twirl open the default actions. I'm going to use the sepia toning action, so I highlight that by clicking on it, and then at the bottom of the actions palette I press the play button. As you can see, in this case it only takes a couple of seconds, and looking at the layers palette we can see exactly what's gone on. This action has duplicated the layer, desaturated it, and then added a clipped hue saturation adjustment layer. You may have noticed that next to the name of this action was another triangle. Let's twirl it open and see what we find. Here we can see in more detail what the action is doing, and indeed three of the steps have more information we can find by twirling open their triangles. Twirling open the step marked Make, we can see the figures inputted into the Hue Saturation dialog box. Hue of 30, Saturation 25 and Lightness of 0. By double clicking on the Hue Saturation layer that was created, we can see these figures. 30, 25 and 0. Because this is on a layer of its own, we can adjust the figures should we wish. In this case it doesn't really help, as this method of making a sepia toned image isn't my preferred choice. But that's ok, because I can go back to where I started. For this we need the History palette. Pressing Alt or Option F9 will bring it up if you don't already have it on your screen. I like to keep mine grouped with the Layers, Channels and Paths palettes. You'll notice a couple of things here. At the top we have our original image with Snapshot underneath it. Looking back at our action, the first thing this action did was to make a snapshot. This makes a place to go back to if we don't like the result. This won't necessarily be at the beginning of working on the image, but when we start the action. The original image is the one above it. Below the snapshots and separated by a double line, we can see the history of what our action did. We can step back through each step until we reach a point that we either like or would like to start working from. In my case, I'd like to go back to the very beginning. I don't want this action run at all on my image. Let's take a look at a much longer and more detailed action. You can see here that I've installed some actions called Blast from the Past, which are a new set of actions by friend and nut Gavin Hoey. These new actions are available from gavtrain.com. Again, we'll open the folder, and for this image I'm going to choose Old Distressed Print Warm Tone, and press play. This time the action takes a lot longer to run, but as we can see with our already open history palette, there's a lot going on. In fact, this time, so much has happened that I don't have enough history states to record it all. To increase the number of history states, go to Edit, Preferences, Performance. Here you can see that I'm set to 20 history states. As the name Performance may suggest, increasing this may cause Photoshop to run a little slower. In my case, I'm going to leave it at 20. Let's skip back over to the Layers palette and we can see all the layers that make up this effect. Twirling open the action, we can see that there has been a lot happening. So let's slow it down and see how it does things. I'm going to discard this image. With Gavin's actions, a whole new image is created rather than a snapshot. This time I'm going to start slightly differently. Rather than click on the name of the action, I'm going to go to the first part and click on that. In this case, duplicate first document. Next, I'm going to hold down the Control key on the PC or the Command key on the Mac and press play. You can see that this time the action has run only one part and stopped at the next. I can continue this Control or Command clicking as long as I wish. 
Releasing the control key and pressing play will continue the action from that point. OK, I'm going to discard this image again. This time I'd like the action to stop when it creates the hue saturation layer. I know from looking through the action, this comes in the part marked Set Current Adjustment Layer. To the left of this, there is a check mark and an empty box. I'm going to click the empty box. By clicking here, I've told the action I would like to see the dialog box before it moves on. So let's give it a try. This time the Hue Saturation dialog box appears. In this run, I'm going to give it a little more saturation. When I press OK, the action will continue to run until the end, or until there is another dialog box that I've marked for wanting to see. And there we have it. By picking apart actions, we can learn how to put together quite complex images. I'm Tip Squirrel from tipsquirrel.com. Thanks for bearing with me.